How do you choose the right journal to submit your research paper to? There are thousands of journals out there, and so some are expensive, some are free, some are high quality journals, and some are not. Hi, I'm Dr. Jia, and today I'm going to talk about my simple process in choosing a journal for my research paper. And be sure to stick to the end because I'm also going to talk about predatory journals and how to avoid them. One question I get all the time, when you start searching for a journal, ideally you should start even before you write your manuscript. That is because each journal has a different scope, it has a different format, different word count, so you don't want to waste time. So it is actually more efficient if you know which journal you are submitting to and follow that format. Then the second question I get a lot is, do I target high impact factor or do I choose to submit to something with high acceptance rate? I don't think it's a binary choice. The goal is actually to submit to the journal that is most suitable for your research paper and of the highest impact possible for that particular manuscript. The first strategy when choosing a journal is to talk to other researchers in that field or talk to your mentor about it. Typically, they are used to submitting paper and would have known what type of research papers get accepted into that journal. The second strategy is to read the journal author guideline and to analyze them systematically. And I have a very simple formula for you, that is ASSET, A-S-S-E-T. A, A for audience. Some journals have a broad audience and some have a very narrow audience. If your research project is a very narrow field and is of interest to a subspecialty field, it's better to submit to a journal with a narrower um, audience rather than a big audience because editors choose to accept research papers that have interest to their readership. S, S for scope. The scope means the type of articles that they accept. Look at the journal's aims, missions, and also the scope of work. They will tell you what type of articles they take, whether it's original research, whether it's editorial, review papers, case reports, maybe interesting images. That way you will know if your research paper suits that particular journal or not. The next S, study design. Here I'm talking about original research that this particular journal likes to take. You will not find this information from the author's guideline, but you will be able to find this information from two places. One is a table of contents, and number two, look at previous archives. If you look at the table of content, you can now see how many clinical trials do they take? How many observational studies do they take? Do they even take case reports? Do they take papers on translational research? If you see a particular journal that takes mostly translational science, but your research is on patient-centered outcome, then you know it's not a suitable journal to submit to. Next, E. E for expense. Now, there are two things to consider when you're submitting um, into a journal. Cost versus reach. Journals that are behind a paywall, in other words, these are journals that people have to subscribe or pay money to read the articles. They tend to not require you to pay any money to, in order to submit that paper. Whereas open access journals, you have to pay article processing charges that can range from $1,500 to $3,000. One thing to note is just because they charge you money does not mean that it's a predatory journal. It is more about who is taking on the cost of publishing the paper. Journals that are subscription-based, it is the institution or the researchers who are paying to read your paper. So they tend to have a narrow reach, but the people who read your paper are tend to be more of your peers, those who are really interested in your type of research. Whereas in open access journal, each article is free for the audience. So it will have a wider reach, but now the cost of the processing fees will fall onto the author's lap. And more often than not, many subscription-based journals will have an open access version. If you do not have the budget or your institution does not cover article processing charges, then I would recommend just submitting to a journal that is subscription-based. Next, T, time. Is your research paper time sensitive? Is it something so new that you need to get it out as soon as possible? If it is, look at the journal webpage, how fast the turnaround is. Some journals have very quick turnaround time, especially if you are going through a desk rejection. But some journals will take six to eight weeks to even go through the first round. Then after going through the review process, it will take another two to four months. Also, how much time are you willing to wait? Are you in a rush of getting promoted and you need the number of publications? Or sometimes you want this paper published before you submit a grant. 
There are several ways to look for the turnaround time. One is through the journal website. Some journals are very upfront about the time it takes to complete review, and unfortunately not all are. Another option is to use this website, SciRef.org. The only problem is, it is good for big name or high impact journals, but they do not have much information on subspecialty journals. Now, there are other softwares that can help you choose, but here you need to complete your title abstract first. Um, so there are two that you can try. First is called Jane, that is Journal Author Name Estimator. Just put in the title and your abstract. It will give you the names of the journals that are most suitable for your article. Another one is Journal Finder Elsevier. Same here, you still need to put in your title, keywords, and also abstracts. Publishing a paper does not come naturally for most of us. To get tips and strategies to help you get your papers out faster, sign up for my newsletter. Also, when you sign up, you will get a free five-day academic writing mini course delivered straight into your email. And the link is in the description below. Now let's talk about predatory journals. The goal of the predatory journal is to take your money without the true intention of disseminating science. I'm going to give you the five characteristics of predatory journals. So watch out for these. Number one, minimal to no peer review process. The whole purpose of science is the peer review process. If there is no peer review process, that means the journal does not care about quality of the research paper. Number two, very short peer review time. We are talking about days or maybe one week. Usually peer reviews are done by very busy researchers. So expecting peer review process to go through in days is not normal. And remember the goal for these journals are to churn out as many articles as fast as they can. The third thing, published articles are of low quality. This ties back to one and two. Number one, there is no peer review process. And number two, very short peer review time. That means there's not enough attention to make sure that the research papers are of quality. Number four, the scope of the articles are all over the place. What I mean by that is, you know, you have one article that is geology, another one medicine, another one on ecology. The fifth thing is about the article processing charges. They typically cost less than legitimate journals. And second, there is also a lack of transparency on the article processing charges. Learning to choose the right article for your research paper will help you increase the chance of your paper getting accepted. But you don't want to make certain mistakes that will cause your paper to get rejected. To learn more, watch the next video.